The Legend of Zelda, the game that started it all. This hit from 1986 brought about a new way to play games. With its dungeons, item gathering, money system, and a plethora of enemies, this game had a lot to offer from the time of its release. Almost 40 years later, the game still holds up well as some nostalgic gamers can enjoy playing the start of this famous franchise. The dungeons of this game are particularly interesting, as they all have unique bosses, various items to use within the dungeons and across the overworld, and these fun old men that give clues about how to advance in the game. But how do these dungeons rank on the list? Well today I'm going to give you my personal rankings of the 9 dungeons of The Legend of Zelda. Here we go! Number 9, The Moon. Easily one of the worst dungeons of the game. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, but getting there was confusing in my first playthrough, and on subsequent playthroughs, I still find myself getting completely lost on the way there. The dungeon itself is pretty easy, as it is the second dungeon in the game. The boss is the Dodongo, and if you ran into the old man in the dungeon, he tells you that Dodongo hates smoke. Pop about three bombs in his mouth and silence him forever. The funny part of this? Dodongo has become a normal room enemy in a couple of the future dungeons. They didn't even stick as a good boss. Number 8, The Demon. Level 7's The Demon requires you to go to a fountain that does not have a fairy in it, play the flute, and go right in. This dungeon was unfortunately a buzzkill when it comes to difficulty. Some good enemies here and there, but ultimately, the item in this dungeon is the red candle. What? You have a better candle, but the boss of this area is a blast from the past. Aquamentis. Hello there. A disappointing end to the third to last dungeon. Number seven, the Manji. Without this dungeon, you have no access to one of the extra heart containers or the fourth dungeon of the game. However, this dungeon isn't great to navigate, since the dungeon is in the shape of a manji, a Japanese character that is very common in their culture. Not a great map concept, though. The boss of the dungeon is Manhandla. I don't like to be manhandled! No, I will manhandle you, Jedediah! Which dies pretty quick with a bomb. One bomb in the center will end it, but even if you don't hit all the sides, the last side goes down pretty standard if you got the white sword earlier in the game. Number 6, The Dragon. So, this dungeon may cause a bit of controversy. The sixth dungeon located in the graveyard decided to have one of the best bosses in the game reduced to a mini boss and a mini boss like creature as the boss. Goma goes down with the bow and arrows if you were able to get them earlier in the run. If not, you can always use the magic rod. It gets through Goma slower, but it works. The dungeon itself is pretty okay, just disappointing in terms of navigation and difficulty. The best part of the dungeon is getting the magic rod, but otherwise it isn't super special. Number 5, The Eagle. The very first dungeon of the game, what can I say? It introduces the dungeons in a good way and shows you exactly how the game is going to go. It gives you the bow and the boomerang. Heck, you can't even kill Ganon in the end without the bow. Like I stated before, the boss of this dungeon is Aquamentus, and if you are on your first playthrough, didn't get the extra hearts and white sword before this, he can be a little bit of a challenge. If you are more experienced, he goes down like nothing. That's why I rank this dungeon in the middle. Good intro, iffy boss. But that's what you get for being the first one. Number four, the snack. <laughs> you need to have the raft to be able to access this dungeon, and from the moment you go in, you're in for a real treat. This dungeon has like likes in it, which will eat your shield if you get eaten by them. Let's hope you found the big shield at its cheapest price. The layout of the dungeon is acceptable. The step ladder will give you access to the final heart container if you've gotten all the available ones before coming to this dungeon. The boss is a two-headed Gleok, which if I didn't make myself clear before, he is one of my favorite bosses in the game. By far, one of the best. Number three, Death Mountain. Your quest is almost over. You found all the items, acquired everything you need before this dungeon. Make sure you have that red medicine handy, because you're going to need it. The map of the dungeon is fantastic. It's a skull! Unfortunately, the amount of rooms in this dungeon is ridiculous. 
If you don't know where you're going and you don't want to use a walkthrough, you could be here for a long time. I got lost for almost an hour because I didn't want to use a walkthrough. But you get two very good items here, the red mail and the silver arrows. These arrows you cannot under any circumstances leave alone. If you do, you will not be able to win the game. The red mail is the best mail in the game as it reduces your damage by half if you got the blue mail. If you didn't get the blue mail, then it should reduce the damage by a total of a quarter. The boss of the dungeon is Ganon, who does not play fair whatsoever. He's fast, so you have to work quick to get rid of him. If you manage to take him down, you can shoot him with one silver arrow, and he's gone. Congratulations, you win! Now save the princess and let's get on with the last two dungeons here. Number two, the lizard. I can't tell you why I like the lizard. The name, the fact that this dungeon has a bomb upgrade, the flute, the blue and red dark nuts. It's a really challenging dungeon, and being the fifth in the game, it earns that title. This dungeon is absolutely amazing. I find myself looking forward to this dungeon every time I play. Something about it just brings me back. Unfortunately, it misses the number one spot because of its boss, Dig Dogger. If you got the flute and you play it in front of Dig Dogger, he shrinks and dies in seconds. A sad ending to such a great dungeon. Number one. The Lion. The eighth dungeon of the game. This is by far the greatest dungeon in the game. There are not one, not two, but five total mini-bosses. They fixed the problem that the dragon caused by making two Gomas the mini-bosses, as well as putting in three manhandlers, which is arguably the best choice. Within the dungeon, you get the Book of Magic, which was originally the Bible before getting changed, as well as the Magical Key, a wonderful item that makes you never need a key again. The dungeon is very difficult to navigate as you may notice a large number of enemies around the dungeon, and the number of rooms is pretty crazy. There are 24 rooms! The boss is the greatest part of this dungeon. It's Gliok! But not two heads, four heads. You have to work fast to kill this wonderful little threat to your existence. After killing Gliok, you gather your final heart and final piece of the Triforce. That's all. That's all nine of them. What are you doing? What are you doing? No! Let the game over screen! But that wraps up the first game's dungeons. Let me know what you think. What are your favorite dungeons of The Legend of Zelda? Write it in the comments below. This series is going straight to Zelda 2 next time with the Seven Palaces. Thanks for watching. See ya! And go. Cool. Dungeons. <laughs> Dungeons. Dungeons of Zelda 9.